You know what the biggest trap is to making quality content or quality products or services? It's trying to make quality content or quality services. So let me explain. The path to getting to quality is actually through quantity because there is no such thing as quality. Stay with me here. How do you know if something is quality? You just keep judging it until you get tired of judging it, right? You probably, human beings, if there's one thing human beings are extraordinarily good at, it's self-deception. Yes, you deceive yourself all the time into thinking that, oh, I've, I've, I've come to a sense that this is a quality thing that I can now put out. No, it's because you physiologically got tired of judging it. And so you mentally argued with yourself that, okay, it's time to put it out. It's good enough. But the truth is nothing is ever good enough. And the paradoxical same truth, the paradoxical uh, flip side is everything is always good enough. So there is no such thing as quality. You have to get this into your mind. There is no such thing as good enough because it doesn't make sense. There is, it doesn't, what do you mean good enough? Good enough to whom? Good enough to, and you know, and especially when it comes to your audience, there are so many people. How do you know if something's good enough? There's everybody, you know, if you have a thousand, if you have 10 audience members, you have 10 gauges of what's good enough. It's impossible. So the only way to know how to move forward in creating content, writing books, creating courses, uh, creating products and services is to do more of it. That is the only metric you can actually plan for and logically move forward in. So quality is a trap and quantity is your savior. Okay. So you must dedicate yourself to creating more, to creating more. So for example, if I were to think I'm not going to make this I'm not going to make any more videos until I can make a great video. What's going to happen is I'm going to exhaust myself into making the perfect video. And I'll basically, once I'm exhausted, then I'll finally say, okay, it's good enough. I'll put it out there. And that process of exhausting myself is not an enjoyable thing, you know, and it's not likely that I'm going to make another one or it's, it's like, oh, I think I'll make another video. It's another exhausting process. But instead, what I do is I dedicate myself to the principle of quantity, doing more of it. And if I dedicate myself to doing more, that means I better give myself, if I, I better invest not, not so much energy in every single one that I exhaust myself. Instead, I think of it as casual and frequent productions. Casual, frequent productions. So I, as you know, I put these things out there twice a week. I am fairly casual in these videos, but therefore it allows me to make many videos. Okay. And over time, as I make more videos, I get more, I get stronger about making videos. I get more comfortable doing it. I become more aware that I, I build the awareness of what videos tend to be good or what videos tend to have more interest in my audience what videos tend to have less interest. I, as I make my videos, I learn more about myself and I learn how to you know, just do it better. So I know some of you might be saying, and I know I'm saying this to myself, well, George, but you know, there's such a thing as bad practice. That's true. You could, do, you could make a lot of bad videos <laughs> and it'll always be bad. But even if you make a lot of bad videos, you still gain one important thing. You still gain two important things. One is, you become more comfortable making videos. If you write a lot of bad blog posts, you write a lot of bad books, you create a lot of bad courses, you still gain the very important internal growth of becoming comfortable doing it, becoming more, uh, making it less of a big deal for you to, to create another one, okay? So that's really, really hugely important. But the second really big benefit of creating a lot of bad stuff get this, is that you give your audience the choice to let you know 
ah, this is less bad than this one, <laughs> okay? Really, seriously. So I'm being facetious here because there's no, such, there's no such thing as bad and there's no such thing as good. Remember what I said at the beginning, there is no such thing as quality. Quality is an illusion. Who gets to decide what's quality? Nobody gets to decide and everybody gets to decide. That's the problem. That's the problem. So there's no such thing as bad and there's no such thing as good. There is only comfort level with, with that thing that you're doing. And there's only comfort level and audience feedback. That's it. So based on your comfort level, you keep making more, okay? And you keep getting more and more comfortable doing it. And then based on audience feedback, you'll say, oh, looks like nobody liked this thing that I, that I did. I'm just doing it the same level that I always do, but people really like this one and people didn't like this one. What's the difference? The difference is the topic. The difference is now how pretty you are, how handsome you are, how brilliant you were, how brilliant I am at talking today. That's not the difference. The difference is, is the topic matter to you. That's it. That's what I've noticed. When it comes to writing, when it comes to videos, when it comes to creating courses, writing books, it's the topic. Yes, the execution, how quality is it? It, it, it does matter, but the problem is you can't really, you can't really um, uh, make a plan for that. All you can do is do what you can in the moment, do what you can. Let's say I'm writing a book. Great, I have the next six months to, to publish my next book. I'll do whatever I can in the next six months. I'll just do my best. But I stay with the commitment to the deadline. I stay with the commitment to the quantity. I bet you in the next six months, I'm, not, I'm gonna feel like I don't wanna publish a book. Oh, it's not gonna be good enough. Oh, what if uh, I could do it even better? Let me, let me wait another three months so I can do it even better. The problem is I can always wait another three months. I can always wait another six months, right? So you have to commit to the deadline and commit to the quantity of production. One book every, my, my deadline, my commitment is one book every six months, one course per month. So every six months, one new book or one rewritten book. I'm gonna be rewriting books soon after I publish five and I'll start rewriting the, the ones I did before. Every month, one course that I'm, that I'm promoting. Now, my rhythm is probably more ambitious than you wanna start with. I am not new to this, right? I'm not new to creating. So my rhythm can be more ambitious than yours, but maybe instead of one book every six months, you can commit yourself to one book every two years. Great place to start. Most people don't even do that, okay? And for me, I create one new course or one I, I promote one course per month. Maybe for you, it's one course per quarter, one course per every three to four months. That's fine. That's more than most people do it, more than what you used to do probably, right? Uh, blog uh, videos, I make two videos a week. That's actually not too much, but maybe you just want to start with one video a week. Or if you're, if you're just really scared, one video every two weeks or one video every four weeks, definitely not too much, right? I write uh, two blog posts a week. Maybe you want to start with one blog post a week. Commit yourself to a deadline and a, con and a, and a consistency of quantity, and you will naturally build up the quality. The quality, let the quality take care of itself. All you can do is commit yourself to the quantity. Now, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the analogies I like to use, it's, it's kind of like going to a buffet, right? Going to a buffet. Think about the, the, the owner of the buffet restaurant. The, the buffet restaurant owner doesn't go, oh my God, I hope they like every single dish. <laughs> you know? Or I hope they like most dishes. Maybe, maybe he might think that, but the buffet restaurant owner is more like, I'm gonna put a bunch of stuff out there. We're gonna put some teriyaki flavored, we're gonna put some Middle Eastern, we're gonna put some, I don't know, we're gonna put some salad, we're gonna put you know, a fondue, I don't know, we're gonna put a bunch of stuff out there. And then we're going to see which ones people choose. Oh, they went for the Middle Eastern. Oh, that's interesting, we didn't expect that. We thought they'd just go for the teriyaki. Okay, we're gonna put more Middle Eastern options. Maybe it's. Maybe it's because there's, there's more people in our neighborhood who like Middle Eastern food. I don't know. You know it's like, oh, it, it, I set up another buffet restaurant and in this neighborhood, there's more people who like uh, you know, Mexican food. Oh, I think, okay, we're gonna do more Mexican here, but we're gonna do more Middle Eastern here. We're gonna do more teriyaki in this place. 
So as a buffet owner, you just have to put a bunch of variety out there and then just see what people choose and then, and then, and then take away the things that people don't, don't really choose and then put more of the things that people do choose. The same thing with your business. The same thing with how you manage your time. You have to try different things. Notice what the market tells you is worthwhile and notice what the market ignores from you. Take away, you know, do less of what the market's ignoring from you. Do more of what the market is, is, is liking from you. And as you do that more and more over time, you will naturally grow in, in your quality. Um, a common question is, well, George, if I, if I commit myself to quantity, how do I deal with the fact, does my audience have that much time to read all my blog posts? Does my audience have that much time to watch all my videos? I, I'm so concerned about the audience not having enough time. Am I just wasting my time creating all this stuff? Remember, you're not creating just for them. You're creating it for yourself. You're creating it for your comfort level. You need to keep it up to have, a, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a secret of when I was doing five videos a week, I was more comfortable doing videos than now when I'm only doing two videos a week. So if you want to grow your comfort level, which is incredibly important for anything you want to do, you need to do it more often. Writing every day becomes more comfortable than writing only once a week. You will notice that. If you only write once a week, you will resist it, resist it, resist it. If you write it every day, there's no question. I'm going to write it every day. I'm going to write every day. Has today, have I written today? No, I haven't. I'm going to write today. There's no question. Writing once a week is going to be easier than writing once a month. Have I written this week? Have I written this week? Oh, I haven't. Let me write this week. The week is almost over. Oh, I better write. Okay. Frequency begets comfort level, right? So uh, that's, that's a secret that you should think about applying to whatever it is you want to become more confident at. What do you want to become more confident at? Do it more often. Oh, I'm so shy reaching out to people. Do it more often because you will become comfortable at it. If you say, oh, I'm only going to make one contact with a potential client per month, you're so nervous before you make that contact. Okay, I'm not going to make one contact a week. Okay, you're still nervous, but you know you got to do it and you will be become more comfortable because you're doing it more frequently. Your brain will learn faster. Oh, I got to make one contact per day. My God, you're going to, you're going to learn so much faster. You're going to become comfortable at it. Within three weeks, you're pretty comfortable reaching out to a new person per week, per, per day, per day. Right, so it's it's frequency is uh, is one of the secrets to to being confident and comfortable at any skill that you want to become. Um, the other thing that is really important is you need to be giving your audience more options. I think I already talked about this. If you don't give your audience options, uh, you only you know. Oh, oh, actually, I'm sorry. What I what I meant to say is this: no matter what your current rhythm is in your business you are already applying the principle of quantity to, to quality. Let me explain. If you're only writing once a month, you are applying the principle of quantity of once a month, and therefore it'll take you 10 years to get to quality or to build, to build quality. If you write every day, it'll take you 12 months to build a really amazing muscle, no, not really. If you write every day, you'll probably get comfortable writing within three months, and then you'll just get better and better and better and better. If you only make one video a week, you'll get comfortable making videos maybe after six to 12 months, and then you'll get better and better and better and better because you've gotten over the fear of it, you've gotten over the, log the logistics of, of making mistakes doing it, and now you can focus on more on the delivery, the topic, and all that other new, all those other nuances. But if you make a video every day, you'll get comfortable within three weeks, and then you can focus on the nuances and making it better and better. You see, so you are already applying this principle of quantity leads to quality. The question is, how fast are you applying it? Are you applying it very slowly, <laughs> okay, or are you applying it more quickly? Well, the question is, how fast do you want to grow your business? Do you want to make another $1,000 in your business after three years of effort? Or do you want to make another $1,000 in your business after three months of effort? It's up to you. So how fast do you want to build your business? How fast do you want to build your audience? It's up to you. You are already applying this principle. 
can you please speed it up? If you want to, if you want to. If you're very comfortable making a, doing the 10 year plan of going from zero to a full time income in 10 years, right? My, my 10 year plan is zero to semi retirement in 10 years. It's very different. You know, mine is zero to one year is full time income uh, or at least part time. Um, but if you are doing like one video a month, you're on a 10 year plan, you know, or probably more like a five year plan, right? Five to 10 year plan. You know, if you do one video a week, maybe you're on a two to three year plan, right? Um, videos are not necessarily, not necessarily what you have to do in your business, but what I'm saying is content creation, product creation, creating courses or whatever thing you're promoting, right? And, and letting people buy. So you are already applying quantity leading to quality. The question is how fast are you doing it? Somebody who uh, writes one blog post a month is only giving themselves 12 opportunities a year. Think about this. If you write one blog post a month, you're only giving yourself 12 opportunities each year to learn about yourself, to become comfortable, and to give your audience more options to tell you what they like. 12 opportunities a year, which is okay, not, not bad. Somebody who writes once a week, publishes a blog post once a week, is giving themselves 50 opportunities a year assuming they take two weeks off, right? Not, not writing two weeks. 50 opportunities, or let's, let's say they take 12 weeks off. They write every week, except they take 12 weeks a year off. They're giving themselves 40 opportunities a year to learn about themselves, to get comfortable, to notice the nuances of how they can improve their writing, to give 40 options to their audience to tell them what they like and what they should do more of versus the person who's doing it only 12 times a year. Which one are you? Which one do you want to be? You have the choice. You have the power to make that choice. And you need to choose whatever is right for your rhythm, for your goals, but you need to make the choice. If you're not making the choice, you're already making a choice and you're probably making the choice out of just whim and not out of any conscious living. You're making, you're living unconsciously. You're just going by whatever you feel like doing, which is the most dangerous thing in the world. I, I honestly think that, you know, unconscious living and doing whatever you feel like is very it's pretty much the same there's a there's a there's a there's a fine line between following your intuition and following your joy following your energy and living unconsciously there's a very fine line how do you know what you're doing remember humans are the best at self-deception how do you know you 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 will you will know based on what you measure right in terms of your actions that's the only thing you can know is how you measure your actions because knowing that humans are excellent at self-deception, just, you just have to realize that you're just really good at deceiving yourself. You think you're following your intuition. You think you're following your energy. You think you're going with the flow. No, you're just procrastinating. Okay. Probably, honestly, you're probably just procrastinating because you're scared and it's natural to be scared. It's natural to be anxious about creating, about putting yourself out there. It's normal. You are a modest and good human being. Of course you're, you're anxious about it. You, you evolved as part of a tribe. Of course you don't want your tribe to, to reject you, right? That's all normal and natural. And you have a potential that's far greater than what you, have, what you are right now. You have a potential to become a creator that <laughs> doesn't give a damn what other people think, right? In a good way. It doesn't judge yourself is what I'm trying to say. You have a potential to become a creator that doesn't judge yourself that lives in service to your calling, that lives in service to your self-exploration and in service to your audience, in service to helping them. And you just show up based on quantity, you show up based on a deadline, and don't call it a deadline if that scares the heck out of you. Call it a lifeline, call it the divine line is what I've heard it called. Call it you know, a, a meeting with your higher self, however you wanna call it, okay? But you've got to do more, you've got to do more. Probably. I mean, most of you here watching this need to do more. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a Gary Vaynerchuk, you have to hustle 24 hours a day. That's not what I'm saying. But I look at a lot of what you guys are doing and not doing, and I really, I really can honestly say, you, if you're watching this, you probably can do more. And you probably need to do more if you want to meet your goals. In other words, you are not aligned right now between what you're actually doing and what your goals are. You know, if you tell me, George, I, I want, 
I do want to build a six figure in business, George. I know you're, you're, you tell me not to pursue the six figures. And I know that that's not really kind of my life purpose to make more money, but I do want for my family and for me to have a six figure income. Okay, fine. If that's what you want, that's what I want to support you in. Now, what are you doing on a day to day basis? Your actions are not matching your goals. Okay. Your actions tell me you're going to build a four figure income. Okay. You're only going to make $5,000 a year, right? Or $10,000 a year or $30,000 a year. That's what your actions are showing me right now. If you want to make a hundred to $200,000 a year, if you want that, I'm not saying you do, your actions have to be different. I can't tell you what the actions are. You have to look at the market's response to you, but almost certainly you can do more. And if you're not sure if you're doing enough, please comment below and say, okay, George, here are my goals. Here are my actions. Am I doing enough? Maybe some of you are doing too much. <laughs> okay. Maybe you're doing too much and you need to scale back on some of some things that you shouldn't be doing. And you should do, you should probably, like most of you watching this are at the computer too much. I can almost guarantee that as well. You look at the computer too much, but you're not doing the right things on the computer. You're doing too much research. You're doing too much video watching. Okay? <laughs> you're watching this video right now. You're probably watching too many videos. You're probably reading too many things on the internet and you're not creating enough. That's, that's the problem. You're consuming a lot, but you're not creating enough. And you can actually spend less time at the computer consuming less and creating more. Another problem with consuming a lot is you get anxious as you're consuming a lot because you think you have to match their quality. You think you have to be as good as them. I consume very little. I read very few books. I read very few articles except for when I'm researching. I, I've, I've, I've announced that I'm going to teach a course. Oh, I'm going to teach video how to make videos next month. Oh, I already know how to make videos in some degree, but I'm sure I can learn some tips from other experts right now to make my course even better. I will do some research to make an already announced product better. So that I already have a deadline, so I don't research forever. Some of you research too long. I almost certainly see that to be true with a lot of some of my clients and you know, some of you. You take too much time researching. So that makes you more and more perfectionistic. You need to set a deadline. You need to announce something first. You need to announce, oh, my book is coming out. My course is coming out. My whatever. Okay, I'm making a video this Friday or whatever. And then you could spend a little bit of time researching if you want to that you think that might help, but that's how you can spend less time at the computer. Spend less time consuming, spend less time researching, and therefore, you're, instead of spending, uh, what is it? You probably spend 12 hours a day on the computer, maybe eight hours a day. I don't know how much time you spend. Let's say you spend 10 hours a day at the computer, okay? You can spend only five hours a day now and make three of those hours creating creating hours because you're probably spending 10 hours a day right now at the computer and you spend 30 minutes creating right so now i want to bump when you bump it up to two to three hours creating and you only have to spend five hours a day at the computer so really think about that look at how much time you're spending uh on the internet and how much of that is consuming or just how much of that is creating so i hope that's helpful remember commit yourself to quantity knowing that will inevitably lead you to quality Okay, and look at your time management and how much time are you spending consuming versus creating. Thanks to those of you who are joining me for the live video. Miriam, Marie Louise, Shweta, Alejandra, thank you. Captain, thank you. Uh, Karen, good to see you here. Uh, Tamara, good to see you. Um, Yule, thanks for joining me. And um, okay, so Captain says, yeah, you know, I do consume a lot and I create relatively little, how do I know when to disengage from it all? So yeah, it's a great question. And, and here's what I would say is this, in your field, you already know enough. You know, Captain uh, writes content about how to have a better relationship, how to have a better marriage, et cetera, and how to have a better career um, primarily. And he's gonna be getting into some financial uh, advice as well. But uh, Captain, from what I've seen, you already know more than most people. You already know more than the audience that's reading your stuff. And if it's not that necessarily that you know more than them, but that you have a passion for it that allow, that gives you the energy to, um, to create content that 
it's reminding them of what they already know to be true, which they really enjoy doing. So sometimes you're teaching them something they never knew. Most of the time you're reminding them. Um, some of the time, you know, so it's kind of a mixture of both. So you already know enough. You don't have to read anymore. You just simply create. And then, uh, yeah. So um, let's see. Alejandra, thank you for your comments as well. Yeah, so stop researching. You already know enough. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the key here. Okay, all right. Um, with that, I, just, I, I wish you a wiser use of your time with media, with the internet, uh, making a lot more time creating so that you can dedicate yourself remembering the principle of quantity is what leads to quality not more research, okay? So wishing you well and uh, see you in the next video.